Today we're going to talk about Fetch AI. This is a crypto project that will have an ICO on Binance Launchpad on February 25th. Um, let me start from disclaimer again. As usual, everything within this video is my personal opinion, not a financial advice of any kind. So I must say that uh, right now there's a lot of debates of this project and whether it will be profitable to invest in its ICO or not. We'll discuss the project itself a bit later. Now let's address the question of whether investing in this ICO will be profitable or not. Let's be honest. The majority of people in crypto are interesting, interested in high and quick gains instead of holding the certain project tokens for 10 years or something because the project fundamentals are great. Moreover, often people merely sell just after the listing of the token as soon as the price is at least a bit higher than the price of ICO was, so some of the example like this one chain uh, and the project is loud and a lot of hype and let's say the hard cap was reached very fast, so not all people who wanted to participate in the ICO were able to do that and so on. So then after the listing there was still some demand from the buyers who hope to sell their tokens later um, at the higher price. So eventually there is no more, more buyers left and the price falls sometimes to the point lower even than the ICO price. Especially it is noticeable in that bear market which we had for more than a year. Therefore while, while ICO were always very risky and often project with strong fundamentals failed at listing event but poorly developed yet enormously hype project were enlisted with a great success. Now such a game has much lower chance to be profitable for a regular retailer. There are private investors who dump the price because of the tokens were sold with a crazy discount for them. Also bots who buy high potential ICOs so that regular people often limited in participation and so on. So I just want to say that while people try to define the reasonability of investment in a particular ICO for a quick profit, from the estimation of whether the project itself good or not. This strategy is actually rarely successful. For example, with the BitTorrent uh, recently that gave like 12x profit after the ICO max, uh, fundamental value of the token is rather controversial. So it is absolutely unclear whether it's, it was wise to invest in this project at the stage of ICO. And the fact that everything was that successful is, in my opinion, mostly related to the fact that there is Justin Sun, as you know, and he has uh, his army of like <laughs> nearly 1 million followers on uh, Twitter. So he had he made a perfect PR campaign just as he can do. And there you go. So now everybody see the success of BitTorrent and think whether Fetch will be the same or not because this is the same Binance Launchpad, you know, there's the project itself looks pretty substantial for the first look from the first glance. Of course, we could roughly estimate the hype from the social media and just say if it is high, then we would probably will have um, enough of the demand. But in fact, we cannot have a trustworthy statistics which would reflect the real picture since the techniques of media marketing and manipulation are extremely strong these days. So what are we gonna do? How can we estimate whether the launch of Fetch will be successful? I'll, I'll tell you right away, there is no way to do that. However, I'd like to stress out that with all the importance of the fundamentals points of the project itself, they do not play the main role in success. So today I'd like to have a quick look at the basics and mostly uh, pay attention to the details which as we know usually hide the truth, right? From the this year, the whole year of a lot of the fails from ICO, ICOs, people finally realized that they, they have to look at some major things about the project like uh, look, look at the ICOs like with the concept of the project, look at the uh, team whether they are professionals or do they have the experience of successful business. Uh, look at the tokenomics, uh, the, develop the, the distribution of the tokens, how many tokens uh, are allocated to private pre-sale and to the team of the project, is there any kind of vesting of the tokens, is there any product which is working right now already, how the roadmap is developing and whether they can make the work job done um, in certain time and 
how like their telegram for example even even such things or how their github code uh, is developed and how the website is looked at the like in general how their service work and and so on if people try to make nice ico these days they would have to consider all those fe features all those parameters and i must say that fetch looks pretty decent from that point of view of course there are people who would find some um, some points which look a bit suspicious um, however we should understand that those uh, their arguments usually can be beaten with counter arguments and it's really hard to define who is right who is wrong just having the open information from the project okay well anyway let's let's look at the major points of the project of what is fetch itself in fact it the project is full of like very representative and colorful uh, definitions uh, descriptions video graphics and everything and everything looks pretty pretty professional so in a couple of words fetch suggests a global system of maintaining uh, the economics, uh, social, all the resources uh, and other process with the use of synergy of technology with uh, uh, technology of uh, AI, blockchain and Internet of Things, IoT. Without going too deep into the details, which are so many of them, I must say that they can make and they want to make the system of uh, autonomous and automated uh, units, uh, they are called agents in Fetch. Each of these agents interact with the other agents with all the information uh, environment around. Uh, it will also uh, send this the data from itself and the, accept the data from the other agents. So in, in the end of, of all of this, the analysis will be made about the system condition and each and every of these agents will make their own decisions about the reasonability of one or another move, one or another act, and they will make some optimization of the process which they are associated with. In fact, they basically offer a system which will make this optimization in the many aspects of our lives. And the areas of the use of this is technically unlimited, starting from the distribution of the investments and power and traffic regulation also you can like order taxi without ordering just your agent will do that and you can go to let's say to have a vacation and your agent will plan it for you and make buy, buy you the tickets order you the hotel and everything and so on so this concept uh, promises significant optimization of the resources and saving of the resources and in general a huge jump of the efficiency of the human society human system overall right so this looks really attractive and exciting at least at the first glance of course there are some issues which in questions they're they're still open for instance in order to use this system you would have to find the users so they would have to be a, they would have to agree to that and such integration can take like years maybe even decades uh if, if even if it will be possible eventually so but on the other hand the, the team of the project works on that more than two years already in silent mode so there are technical details which are shown in their yellow paper and I must say that um, there's still, of course, a lot of issues because it was shown in pretty much general way. But from the white paper, at least we can see that they were they're about to use sort uh, so-called useful proof of work. Those agents will confirm transactions by the closing the sort of these chains of the contract. So they will use also the sharding method like with from Zilliqa. They will provide the simultaneous work of all the agents by this method. And finally, they will use the uh, DAG or directed acyclic graph that will provide the parallelization and other improvements. Those things in their documentations, they are not described in like for with details but it's not surprising because Fetch doesn't want to have them to be known from other 
project other people so they want to save some the some of the secrets and another thing is tokens questionable like debatable issue as well because you see the token must be utility token here so it works for the maintenance the system so why they would have to sell it why not just to distribute those tokens with the, with the uh, uh, entities who would like to work with their system uh, for free basically and why they would have to introduce this speculative factor while when you make this uh, ICO and so on well first yeah it's a general answer for that that basically they would have to have some profit on their project so pay salaries and so on and also they uh, can provide those tokens for the people for for entities organizations who would like to use their system eventually beforehand that is sort of maybe useful for at some point i must say again that there are many things which some people can find at least a bit controversial or suspicious but again i don't want to have this discussion here in this video because it would require too much time and basically we'll not be able to find the truth anyway but there are some general things which i would like to point out first let's start from the positive things first is the expectations the BitTorrent token was launched on binance launchpad right and binance wants the other other icos to know that their launchpad is great and also for retailers that it's sort of safe and profitable to um, use their launchpad to get get some profits like even now bitorrent token is like it access from the ico and you also can notice that the binance coin will be used to purchase the um, uh, tokens of the fetch uh, in this ICO and basically all the other tokens will be sold probably with Binance coin so you can notice that the price of uh, Binance coin rose quite a lot for the recent month like twice probably and this is basically because of the fact that a lot of people are expecting this launchpad to be successful of course there's like decentralized exchange and everything but still uh, people are they, they want to have the option to buy cheap ICO coins second thing is the reputation and again this is uh, from Binance first of course that they want to show that launchpad is good and everything but also just look at the uh, people who are in this project most of them are from Cambridge those are not people who wanted to do something which is related to scam or something like that by the way their CEO was in the beginning of DeepMind. DeepMind is the company which was making the artificial intelligence applications. They developed the program which beaten the human champion in the game Go. They also have the one of the strongest algorithms for other, other games including chess. And this company was intended to be bought by Facebook but in 2014 Google bought it for something like 700 million dollars it tells at least something about the uh, reputation of this guy well actually yes i have to say that some people have doubts on the fact that uh, especially the ceo that he has some problems with finances and not so successful ca career uh, history as it is at least said on on his resume but again just consider the reputation issue and that would pretty much make some basis on your opinion on that and third it is just my my personal opinion of course but you know that the ICO in 2017-18th was pretty much the space when we had a lot of the losses most of the tokens got wrecked and it, it's not only because of the bear mark also because of the fact that a lot of those projects didn't perform well they didn't work as as hard as they should especially considering the amount of the money that they collected and then it means that maybe now in 2019 and and from from 2019 there is time to new project to come into the market which could sort of occupy this space by providing the real value and working in a better way and in that way there are like signs of these um, new players come into the space and they are they may be not that known from in terms of the media or hype but they have quite of the strong fundamentals and they have the resources knowledge the data the uh, 
uh, platforms, workable products, and everything. And some examples like you remember R3 uh, startup, which uh, supposed to participate with Swift, a uh, new uh, blockchain initiative. Of course, there is like XRP is involved, but this is separate uh, topic. Who who did know about the R3 before that? Or um, Digitex Futures is the centralized platform for futures contracts. Or Abra, or Greencoin, or uh, Hedera Cash Graph, which is with all its controversy has a huge potential. And we can find the whole groups of such projects, such uh, companies which are gaining some uh, attention which getting uh, more and more influence and we can remember like on chain and neo and binance of course and now we can see the same with fetch for example if you look at the partnerships with fetch you can find that it was supported by mobi mobi's mobility open blockchain initiative and there's a whole bunch of such uh, companies like bosch uh, blockchain at Berkeley, Hyperledger, IBM even, and, and even IOTA, and Fetch is among them. Did you hear about that before, about this organization? Okay, maybe not, but you probably hear, heard, heard about Bact and Samsung, it's uh, playing with crypto and Fidelity and so on, but not about that. So, and this is sort of a hidden hidden power of the new, new echelon of, of crypto companies. So there is Joseph Lubin among them also. This is co-founder of Ethereum and founder of Consensus. If you don't know what Consensus is, is the company which is developing the decentralized application on Ethereum. And it has, by the way, like 1,000, uh, almost 1,000 employees. It's, it's a lot, guys, for, for this market. So Fetch is supported by uh, also something uh, which is called Blockchain for Europe. This is association of such companies as Ripple, uh, Cardano, NEM, and so on. So you see how Fetch is among them. It, it definitely says something about it. You maybe know about the Ocean Protocol, which has a lot of the intersection with Fetch. Spark, Digital Capital, which is a venture firm in New York. And it has a portfolio of um, some coins like Ontology, Cardano, NKN, Quark chain and so on. Uh, of course, Binance. I don't think that we shall comment anything on that. We basically, it, it's clear that Fetch is among the very, very strong friends which can help to, and support them. At least, at least I think so, guys. And now just, just look at the media which was writing about Fetch. It's not something like crypto uh, based, crypto related uh, media. It's British Telegraph, it's Economist, it's Forbes and Guardian and Business Weekly. Those are all the very respectful media and they translate their reputation to the Fetch by writing some good things about them. I don't say that they find that Fetch is great, but they still they do something which gives the Fetch additional trust. And, and many things like that. For example, you can look at their white paper which is like describe the general evolution of the digital economies and the systems in, in that. And you can see the reference list is 80 papers. Can you find many of the projects which would have something like that, which would have uh, so many references, mostly like journals, scientific journals. So, but anyway, let's, let's stop to praise, praising them and let's look at some negative points. First, I would say too much hype maybe. Usually it, it leads to some overbought situation when um, a, a speculative component is too high and the coin got dumped often and ideally it should be some dark horse uh, which would have a strong uh, fundamental, strong pro product but poor marketing and that's why nobody knows about it so we can buy it cheap and then eventually it will have product uh, development and uh, people will know eventually about it. For Fetch, marketing is very good, I would say. It's, it's very hyped. So this is, this is sort of yes and no here. The only one thing which, is ma which makes this not that bad is that the hard cap is only $6 million, which, well, it's, it's, it's high, especially for the amount of tokens which would be sold, but not crazy at least. 
and okay the second thing is that the project itself is sort of very has very low long uh, time scale I mean I could see that it could be realized and implemented within maybe 10 20 years or more at least few years and it's really really long for the crypto uh, project so that would it, it's not bad but it, it makes the people who are speculate on that on that dump their tokens very fast and that would make the short-term progress slowed down third is what i really don't like about it is the token distribution for the tokens distrib distribution this is there is there are a few things first we have this 20 percent for founders of the whole token distribution we'll have like 1 billion tokens so 20 percent for founders 10 percent for advisors and 24 foundation to like develop the project and so on so 50 percent in total are for the the people who are involved in project mining rewards 15 percent and only 35 percent is for the sale to like for the crowd sale uh, moreover if we look at the details here six percent only will be sold on the public sale on this ico because private sale was already 6.38 and 5.24 was on seed sale so 11 percent was already sold before so this 17 percent only six percent of that 17 is on ico so basically you would have only six percent of tokens which would be sold during the ICO uh, event. It's the smallest amount. You would expect that it could be dumped a lot by the other components of the tokens. Of course, they try to make it not that strong, uh, this effect not that strong by slowly releasing the tokens with time. But you see, still, it would be great if this uh, uh, whole market will grow that the crypto will go up but if not if we will continue to be flat and going sideways then we might not have enough liquidity and if the people in the other parts of this allocation would like to at least some of them like this uh, the advisors or some of the team or or whatever they if they would want to or or maybe the private sale or uh, seed sales people they would want to dump their tokens then the price will suffer a lot from their telegram chat i couldn't find like, anything el anywhere else but in their chat that 11 percent of token supply will be the initial circulating supply so what are those 11 percent this are the um, this is the six six percent from the ico and where is the other five percent other five percent would be actually a part of released uh, tokens from private sale from the seed sale from for the from the founders advisors and the foundation i think so like one two one percent from all of those this means that they will not be uh, locked up completely for like a year or something as they said but some portion already will be released very soon and again this might affect the price a lot especially in the short term this is quite negative in my opinion so we can just hope that the uh, uh, project will develop quite of the pro progress and we'll see some uh, gro growing interest to the investments in this and price will naturally grow and we'll have enough liquidity to them to be able to get some of the gains from that as well to cover the, the salaries and, and do things as, as they need so let's sum this up guys first is thatch a good project strong project yes apparently it is is it a huge risk to invest in this absolutely i think it's enormous risk to invest in ico in, including this ico on the other hand i personally think that this is the level of risk which is sort of compensated by the high potential of the gains which it could provide in future especially in the long term it, it's wise to think as a venture capital when you can like invest in 100 projects with uh, like very ambitious uh, goals and everything and then eventually most of them will like 95 percent of them will go to zero but one two of them will be new amazon or google that would make you very nice give you very nice profit so yeah again if you want to invest don't invest to like everything which you have if you have like three thousand dollars but just a very little small percentage of your portfolio again it's just my opinion not financial advice guys 
but uh, hopefully it will work out. I really wish this project to be successful with time, so we'll see. The ICO is very soon, so guys, good luck with that, and thank you for watching. Hope to see you in the next videos. Goodbye.